Eight one one. Do you notice what did not happen at the World Cup? Where all these teams from all over the world were playing soccer, what they call football. Not a single player took a knee. Not a single player took a knee. They were so proud of their country. So patriotic. And their country was so proud of them. That's all we want. We're sick and tired of the status progressive mental attitude, whether it's on the football field or on the TV screen or on the movie screen. We're sick of it. And it is an ideology, and we're tired of people telling us how awful our country is. You want to criticize the government, that's all right. But the national anthem isn't about the government. It's about the country. It's about you. It's about the people in this country. It's about the people who fought for this country. These people who take a knee, they have no respect for this country. Social justice. They don't know what social justice is. They couldn't do any of this in 80% of the world. In 80% of the world. Football isn't played in most of the world. They'd be a lot of strong, muscular guys who would have to be doing something else. Football is a very unique sport. It's unique to America. America is a very unique country, but too many of them don't see it that way. And it's a joke. It's a joke. We're free people. We're not a perfect people. We have a wonderful economic system. It's not a perfect economic system. We have a wonderful justice system. It's not a perfect justice system. But they're wonderful. Mankind has never done any better. Decades of indoctrination in government schools, universities, and colleges loaded with tenured Marxists and malcontents. Decades of leftism out of Hollywood, brainwashing with movies and TV. Decades of miscreants posing as journalists, pseudo-newsmen and women, beating their chests about freedom of speech and freedom of the press when they don't believe in any of it. They believe in their own freedom to spout off. That's about it. Day in and day out, every complaint, every claim of victimhood, every perceived snub, And we're told that our society is a disaster. And yet we know it's not. We live here. We live here. We know what it is. It's to be celebrated, not degraded. We have tens of millions of people all over the world who would come to this country in a second. Leaving their utopias. Communist utopias, socialist utopias, strongman utopias. I listen to the press in this country, the way they talk about this president. They're exactly what I said on Hannity on Tuesday. They're psychopaths. They're psychopaths. They bring in former government officials who served in prior administrations to trash the existing administration, and we're supposed to be impressed. They bring in one kook after another out of academia, or activists, or members of Capitol Hill, of Congress, to reinforce their own propaganda and demagoguery. And we're supposed to be impressed. They tell us the president sold out to Putin. There must be dirt on Putin. And yet, he has been stronger in dealing with Russia than any president since Ronald Reagan. He's been stronger in dealing with Iran than any modern president. He's been stronger in dealing with North Korea than any modern president. So the facts belie the propaganda. But it doesn't matter. Because you have all kinds of agendas out there. The left, which used to trash Joe McCarthy, now finds a Russian behind every tree and under every rock. The left that hated Comey Loved him the second that Donald Trump fired him. The left 
that trashed the CIA for decades. All of a sudden, you can't question the CIA. The left that hated J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI. All of a sudden, they claim to love the FBI. It's all a lie. That's what status progressivism is. A lie, a big lie, a series of big lies. And it's infected every corner of our society, especially the media. Can you name one host, host, not guests, on CNN who's perceived as conservative? Just perceived as conservative. There isn't one. Can you name one host on MSNBC who is perceived as conservative? There isn't one. Omar, can you name one host on Fox who's perceived as liberal? I can name several. Shep Smith, among others. But I'm not a special pleader for Fox. I'm not a special pleader for anybody. The New York Times, predictable for 100 years. The Washington Post, predictable. Even the so-called conservatives, for the most part, almost to the man and woman, who write in their op-ed pages. They're not serious conservatives. They're not really conservatives. I said for the most part. They have to do what Scarborough does. They have to be a dancing monkey, pretending to be Republicans, pretending to be conservatives, while trashing both in order to get a paycheck. These insane and hysterical attacks on Donald Trump have exposed the people who make these charges and allegations for who they are and what they are. Not Donald Trump. Donald Trump's not a politician. He doesn't talk like a politician. Some days he'll speak more smoothly than other days. Some days his tweets will be different than the other days. So what? So what? Barack Obama was smooth, smooth as ice, while he was fundamentally destroying America. Which is better? Well, I know which is better. We also have individuals who are hell-bent on destroying this president at a personal peak. They opposed him in the primaries, and they would not come around in the general election. They said so many over-the-top things about him that rather than walk them back and say, you know what, I'm pleasantly surprised and actually supportive, they just keep digging in and digging in and digging in, and they've turned their columns, their websites, their podcasts into trying to justify who they are and what they've said by trying to destroy him. So rather than take each issue as they come, Rather than look at his actions, rather than picking apart every syllable, they're out to smear the guy and destroy the guy. One day it'll be Smokey Daniels, the next day it'll be Michael Cohen, the next day it'll be Putin, it doesn't matter. Next week it'll be something else, and the week after that it'll be another thing. I told you here the day after the election they will try and take this man out, either by impeachment or some kind of criminal allegation. And they've never stopped. What we didn't know, but we know now, is they actually started doing that before he was elected. Incredible. We have the worst political scandal in American history, I would argue. And I'm a student of history. That has taken place and is taking place right in front of our eyes. And the media defend it, support it, and benefit from it. An entire political party is part of it and supports it. The Republican Party is so weak that it has 15 different positions on every issue. 